Welcome back to the Mechanic Man DIY YouTube channel. Today we are going to be working on the Z28 again. Um, and we're actually going to be covering timing. Let's go take a look. We're back under the hood of the Slow Marrow. I'm going to show you what we were dealing with yesterday. Why we need to reset our timing. This car actually does not have a timing tab on it. So, where it sat, I had no idea where the rotor was. I had no idea where top dead center was. And I had no idea where zero degrees is at on the dampener. So, if you look, this car is actually installed with a pretty nice dampener on it that actually has the degrees printed right on it. But what we're missing is a timing tab. Now, without a timing tab, those degree marks don't mean a whole lot because you have nothing to reference it to. So, basically, we got to go back to uh, basically the beginning of timing the car, which means... First thing you gotta do is forget the distributor, forget where it's at. It doesn't matter. Um, you gotta go to the number one cylinder right here, which would be on the driver's side front cylinder of the car. What I ended up doing was pulled all the spark plugs out, and then I spun the motor over until I found top dead center. Now the way you do that is actually pretty simple. Um, there is a way you can do it wrong uh, because it is a four-stroke engine. Obviously, you have to find top dead center on the compression stroke. And what that means is obviously you have your compression stroke, um, you know the cylinder goes down, it hits, it comes back up, pushes your exhaust out, intake valve opens, draws that air fuel mixture back in, and then the piston comes back up again on the compression stroke. So the easiest way to know if you're on the compression stroke was I just held my finger over the hole, spun the engine over at the crank with the ratchet, and waited until I had pressure pushing against my finger which told me indefinitely that I was on the compression stroke. Now another method you could do pull the valve cover off, physically watch your valves, spin it over a few times to make sure that when you're on the compression stroke both of those valves are going to remain closed so it can compress. So we found the compression stroke now you got to find top dead center which when you're doing it with a ratchet and the engine's moving really slow, it can be kind of difficult. So what I did was I had the spark plug out. So I just went ahead and actually just stuck a little screwdriver in there and just made basically a man feeler gauge to tell when that piston was at total top dead center. Now that's not a foolproof method. There are tools, gauges you can buy that will better determine when you are at that exact point. I basically just took my time and felt it out until I knew that that piston was all the way up and then dropped back down. You know, you can find that that exact top dead center basically as close as you can by feel anyways. Now again, I got lucky with this damper. It does have a zero degree mark and it landed right where you see it there, which tells me I'm pretty close. Now, without a timing tab, it's hard to really tell if that's right or not because it's lined up with nothing. That's where a timing tab will tell you that you are at top dead center. Granted, it was set up correctly by the previous person that worked on this car. Well, this doesn't have a tab, so which is why I had to find top dead center at the engine on the compression stroke, and there's my zero degree mark. And what I had to do was basically make my own timing tab. Now, without physically having a tab in there, I just made a mark on the timing cover and you can kind of see there's a little bit of a crease on there and there's my mark right there there's a little V that I made with a permanent marker that lines up decently close with my zero degree and actually what I noticed once I looked in there there was a tiny little white paint mark on there from the previous owner so that's good news that tells me that I'm pretty darn close now this is is and can be an exact science given we don't have any specialty tools to do this other than a timing light getting it to where it is now is pretty darn close it's going to be close enough that we can get this car running we can get it fairly dialed in and then later on we can go fine tune it test drive it we can make minor adjustments to the timing and just keep adjusting it until the car seems happy other things you can do is just go put it on a dyno if you got the money and 
you know, adjust it that way. Or if you really want to, it kind of goes against my philosophy, you can pay someone else to do it. But anyways, so right now we're at Top Dead Center, and I actually did all the work already. Um, and we talked about the other thing I was going to do was pull the distributor. I did already pull it out. I actually completely changed the orientation of it. Um, and one thing that I was really thrown off by, and you got to be careful of this kind of stuff because it really made for kind of a goofy night for me last night, was there's a mark right here, and it looks like number one, and it corresponds with a mark on the base of the distributor down here that you can't really see. And I made the assumption that that was number one. Well, obviously, you follow the spark plug wire. That was not number one. That mark is simply telling me where the cap lines up with the base of the distributor, which really isn't even necessary because the cap cannot go on wrong. There's a notch in it with the four mounting tabs. You really can't put it on wrong. So when you see other marks like that, you got to be careful that you don't just assume anything because they'll really throw you for a loop like they did me. Because I assumed that was number one. I pulled the cap off, started looking at where the rotor was pointing with the engine at top dead center, and it was nowhere near where that mark was. So basically that told me right away that something was way off. And it really wasn't. It just wasn't the correct mark, and I shouldn't have even paid attention to it. So we're starting from scratch. So any marks that are on the engine right now or on that distributor don't matter at all. So anyways, top dead center, we got our zero degree. I made a mark on that timing chain cover down here so we know where our baseline is we can adjust from. I did pull the distributor again. Um, I spun it. Now when you pull that out, you'll notice there's gears on it, but be sure to look underneath. There's a flat tab underneath there that needs to mate up with a rod that runs your oil pump. And you really can't mess it up because the distributor will not seat all the way down in until that is lined up correctly with your oil pump rod. So, you can set the distributor wherever you want. Now what I did was I tried to square it up, given the firing order of this car, on the left side from where we're standing, three of those spark plug wires go to the passenger side, three on that side go to the driver's side. So the way that I have it set up eliminates crisscrossing. Now this doesn't matter, it's just what I did for my own preference. When I set it, Wherever the rotor was, I've got the rotor somewhat pointing towards the number one cylinder here, which that really doesn't matter either. But when you do that and you set your distributor, what I did was actually on this vacuum advance right here, was I made a mark as to where my rotor was, which right now that rotor, which is connected, meshed up with that cam gear, is pointing towards number one, and it is right in this range right here. So this is my number one spark plug. So I pulled all the plugs, reinstalled them all, 18436572, re-ran the wires, got them all routed and somewhat nice and neat, and we should be set to start the car. The timing is gonna be off, but we should be safe. If anything, we're pretty close to zero. Obviously we're gonna advance it. The distributor is still kind of loose because obviously we got to rotate it just a little bit to get it set exactly where we need it. So stay tuned, we're going to fire it up. I think we're ready to fire this bad girl up. See what happens and we'll go out and see if we need to do some adjusting. Would you look at that? got it wrapped up um, we got the timing decently set now if you saw the timing light in there 
Um, it's kind of hard to tell because my mark's not perfect on there, but at idle, which actually is about a thousand RPM in this car, it's turned up a little bit just to cold weather. Um, we were showing about 30 degrees, which is a little bit high. Um, and then total timing with the car revved up. Now I took it, I mean, I couldn't see the tack, but I revved it up pretty high, loud enough to piss off the wife, but got it revved up and it was actually showing about 42 degrees after the mechanical advance, which is a little bit high. Um, now if you look around, some guys do run timing that high in these cars. This one, I don't know a lot about it. I don't know the exact, um, the chamber size, you know, there's so many factors that go into correct timing and there's a lot of stuff that I simply don't know. So what I ended up doing was actually turn the timing down a little bit. We got it down to about 35, 36 degrees, which should be pretty good. Now idling here in the garage, it's cold out today, it's raining, the weather's crappy. It's not a good way to accurately set your timing. Now every vehicle is going to be different depending on your setup, depending on the weather, depending on your fuel octane. You know, timing really is something that could be adjusted fairly often. So 42 was a little bit high, dropped it back down to about 35, which actually put my initial timing and idle about 25. Now with it idling as high as it is, we could be seeing some mechanical advance. Um, probably not a lot, but maybe just a little bit. So we're going to go road test the car, but it's crappy out, it's raining, there's salt all over the roads. I'm not going to take this out right now, um, so we're going to save it for a later day to actually go out and adjust it. But where we're sitting, we should be safe. Um, what we really need to do, and what I'm really eager to do, is to get this thing to the track. I want to run it. Um, but it's still winter, and it's cold. The track's not even open yet. We're in northeast Iowa. The winter has been going on forever, it seems like. So we're just going to take advantage of the garage time. We're going to keep working on the car. We're going to keep fixing it up. Like I said, we got the timing set. The next thing we're going to do, um, which is actually how I discovered the timing, is going to go through and figure out exactly what it is that we have. I do have some paperwork with the car that tells me a few um, of the details, but I don't know anything about the heads yet other than they're aluminum. Some of those things, the more we learn, the more accurately we can dial this thing in. Um, so once we get to the track, now 36 degrees, it was just 35, 36, it was running pretty good. Now with it set at about 42, which is what's in the video, um, the car actually seemed to really like it, which is kind of a good sign. Um, that means that where I'm at now, I can turn it up a little bit. And the best way to determine that, if we can get the car somewhat dialed in, we can start bumping up that timing at the track and seeing if we're seeing any increases. Now we could put it on a dyno, but I'm not going to do that because it's really not the greatest way to dial it in either. We just need to get it out and dial this car in for what it likes to do on the street. So um, that's going to be it for now. If you have any questions, leave some comments um, about what I did and different strategies, things that you can do on your car, your project. Uh, if you like the video, be sure and hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. We're going to keep on going with this car. we got a lot more videos coming out. Once the weather gets nice, we're going to get this thing out. We're going to burn some tires, take it to the drag strip, and we're going to have a good time. So thanks for watching. We'll see you later.